Why can't I access the variables in my method from outside my method? What can I access that's declared outside a method? Why don't I just put all of the variables out in the class so all of the methods can access them? This is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. Welcome to the channel. If you're here because you want to learn to program in Java, you're in the right place. This is the 29th video in the Introductory Programming in Java full course and the fourth video of Lesson 5, Static Methods in Java. We've looked at static methods generally and talked about parameters and return values. Today we're going to talk about scope, which should answer some questions about why we need parameters and return values. Let's get right into it. We should begin with a few definitions. My definitions are going to be simplified from the Java language specification, which I'll include as a link in the description of this video. I need to simplify the definitions because there are many concepts we haven't encountered yet. We must first define name, because scope is all about where names are visible. A name is what we use to refer to variables, methods, and classes. So for example, when you define a variable int number, number is the name that you will use to refer to that variable. Or when we import java.util.scanner, we're importing the name of the scanner class so we can use it in our program. When we define a method with public static double average spending, then average spending is the name we use when we want to invoke that method. Those are names. You probably already knew that. So then, scope is the region of the program where we can access a variable, method, or class by using its name. So, is the name you're using associated with something, code, or a value where you're using it? Names are declared. We declare variables by giving the type and then the variable name, and we declare classes with the word class. We declare methods with visibility specifiers, the return type, the name, the parameter list, and then the body. If a name is in scope, then when we use that name, Java will evaluate it to the variable class or method that it's associated with. If a name is not in scope, then Java will give us a syntax error. For example, sum cannot be resolved to a variable. The rules of scope aren't too bad, so let's take a look at an example and talk about what is visible in scope and what isn't and why. We have here a very simple program called scopeexample.java, and I've omitted the Java doc comments to keep it short. Let's look quickly at what it does. In main, two random numbers are generated. These are then sent to the add method with the results stored in the variable result, and then that's printed. The sum of operand one and operand two is result. Then the two numbers are sent to the absolute difference method and the results stored in the variable result. And then that's printed the difference between operand one and operand two is result. If we look at the two methods, add and absolute difference, one adds the two parameters and returns the sum. And the other subtracts the second parameter from the first, takes the absolute value of that difference and returns the absolute difference. So one method adds two numbers, another method subtracts two numbers, and they're both invoked by main. Now let's identify the names, at least the ones we've defined. We defined the class name, scope example, and the method names, add, absolute difference, and main. Within add, we have addend1, addend2, and sum. Within absolute difference, we have minuend, subtrahend, and difference. Within main, we have args, operand1, operand2, result, and rand. Now, where are each of these names visible? Let's use this rule of thumb. Names are visible within the construct within which they're declared. So by construct, I mean package, class, method, if statement, or loop. They are not visible outside of their construct. But if a construct encloses another, such as a class enclosing a method, then the names in the enclosing construct might be visible within the enclosed construct. We'll get to when they might not be visible in a moment. Now I'm going to show a representation of this code next to the code that shows scope. There isn't an official diagram for showing scope that I'm aware of, but what is usually done works very well, and that is nested boxes. So the outer box is the class, and I've labeled it scope example. Everything else is inside that box. You'll notice everything is enclosed within the class's curly braces. A class is one of our constructs. It creates a scope. Within that scope are three methods, add, absolute difference, and main. 
Each of those is a method, another one of our constructs. So I've drawn a box around each of those in the diagram. Within add, we have addend1 and addend2, the two parameters, and the local variable sum. A local variable is a variable that's declared within a method. It is local to that method or visible only within the method. Similarly, within absolute difference, we have minuend, subtrahend, and difference. Within main, we have args, operand1, operand2, result, and rand. Okay, so what's visible or within scope, where, and why? Within main, all of the variables that are declared in the parameter list or locally, so the ones I've drawn in its box, are visible. In addition, names within the enclosing scope are visible. So by enclosing, I mean the box around main in the diagram. Or again, main is declared within the curly braces of scope example. So the names that are visible within scope example are scope example, main, add, and absolute difference. So those are names I can use within main. And you can see I'm invoking both of the other methods within main. Similarly, within add, I can use any of the names that are declared within add, but also I can use names in the enclosing scope, so scope example, main, add, and absolute difference. And you can follow the same logic for absolute difference. We don't have access from one scope into another scope that isn't an enclosing scope. So I can't go from main out into the enclosing scope and then down again into the add method scope or into the absolute difference method scope. You can only access moving outward. So this is why if we want data to go in or come out of a method, we must pass parameters or do something with a return value. Now, I want to add just another level of scope because in Java, conditional statements and loops also have their own scope. So I want to show you that in the code and in a diagram. So instead of generating one set of random numbers and adding and subtracting them, I'll do it three times by wrapping a for loop around the code in main. I'll write that for int i equals zero, i less than three, i plus plus. Because i is declared in the loop header, which is one of our scope constructs, it's part of the loop. In my diagram, I show this scope within the main scope. Within this loop, I have access to i. I can also access any variables in the nesting scope, which is main's scope, so operand1, operand2, result, and args, and I am accessing those. I'm assigning into them, passing some as parameters, and printing them. Within the if statement, I also have access to the scope two levels out, which means I have access to the names add and absolute difference, which is how I can invoke those methods. But if I try to access i outside of the for loop, I'll try to assign a value to it after the loop. Java tells me i cannot be resolved to a variable. This is the message you'll get if you type the name of your variable wrong or if it's out of scope. Notice if I try to access difference, which is in the absolute difference method and out of scope in main, I'll get the same error. All right, now let's return to the might. I said, if a construct encloses another, such as a class enclosing a method, then the names in the enclosing construct might be visible within the enclosed construct. And they are, we can see that Unless you have a declared name within a scope that is the same as a name in the enclosing scope, then the more local name will be the name that's resolved to a value. The term for this is shadowing. The name in the enclosing scope is shadowed. Let's look at an example. For the purposes of illustration, I'm going to define a constant within scope example called max. So I'll write public static final int max equals 50. And then I'll replace the upper bound in my call to next int with that constant. So the program will work exactly the same because max is in the class scope. And from within main, we can see that constant in the enclosing scope. But suppose I then put a constant within main with the same name. I'll write final int max equals two. This is an example of shadowing. There is now a name called max that is defined within main. So Java will look no further for the value and it will use the local value two for max. And if I run the program now, 
I get some pretty boring arithmetic, since the random number generated will always be 1. You can see it's using the locally defined max. I'd say there's one final burning question about scope, although if you have others, please feel free to ask them in the comments. And that is, why don't I have variables declared out in scope example? Why don't I declare the two operands out there, since all of the methods use them? And the answer will be much easier to understand once you work on large-scale software projects. At this small scale, you probably wonder why we would break this program into methods at all, and you'd be right. I use small programs in my examples, so the amount and function of the code is not distracting, so we can focus on how to write methods properly. But the irony is, we don't really need them. In a large-scale project, first, you'd run out of meaningful names if all of the names were visible to all of the code. Second, you'd likely lose track of what those names were. Remember that most software is written by many people over time. If all the names are in the enclosing scope, how do you know if the variables hold the data you think they hold? Imagine if add wrote its answer into a variable called result in the class scope, and the person writing main believed result held the answer to the addition, but somewhere else in the program, somebody called the absolute difference method, and it also wrote its answer into result. Depending on the application, that could be bad, or seriously bad, or absolutely catastrophic. The parameter lists and return values mean that each method is given exactly what it needs to do its job, and can't modify data unexpectedly. And it means we have documentation of exactly which methods might modify which data. I hope that now scope makes sense, and you have even more of an understanding of why we break programs into methods with access to limited data. I have included an auto-graded exercise with a link in the description of this video that allows you to identify what variables are in and out of scope in the scope example program, and the program has been uploaded to my GitHub repository with a link in the description. When you're feeling confident with the concepts in this video, you are ready to move on. As always, have fun and keep coding.